Hello, and welcome to the first episode of Disc Golf Physics. I'm Joe Johnson for No Budget Disc Golf Videos. I'm also a physics professor. That's what I do for a living at Mercyhurst University. So uh, a few months ago, I saw a video. It was actually a really good video through Innova that um, talked about some of the physics of throwing and um, had some really cool graphs and had some actually really good information. But one of the things I noticed um, my physics teacher brain couldn't let go of was that um, the guy who was giving the presentation used the words wrong. He did, didn't use the right physics terminology. So that sort of inspired me to, to put together a series of videos just sharing some information. Hopefully it'll be fun and useful for you. I know it's fun for me. I like thinking about this stuff, but I'm kind of a nerd, so let's do it. Uh, about a year ago, actually a little more than a year ago, Nate Perkins came to town um, for our club. He gave a clinic and after the clinic, he allowed me to take a video of his throw. The video looks like this. He's just ripping a backhand out into a field. I took this video and imported it into Logger Pro software. Uh, Logger Pro is a software made by a company called Vernier, and what it lets you do is track the motion of an object through video frames. So I mark, I marked the center of the disc in each frame, and I marked his center of gravity, which is um, in a human being located just below the belly button, about halfway between your front and your back. So each frame, the video advances and he moves forward. The yellow line here is my zero point, it's the origin, if you remember from math class, that's the zero, zero point, and you can see how he's moving in the horizontal direction and in the vertical direction. Tracking his motion for each frame, step by step. And we can see through the whole entirety of his throwing motion. Once I've done that, it does a lot of the math for me, which is really nice giving me a data table here with his position relative to this zero point for every single frame of the video. And that's cool and all, but the really cool part is when we come over to this graph over on the right. This X in, uh, in the graph is where the disc is located at any given time in the video. So you can see his motion starts just after four seconds and continues till about six, um, a little short of seven seconds, so 6.75 seconds, somewhere in there, uh, for his last point when I'm tracking the disc. And we can see that the disc is moving forward and then moving backwards a little bit, and then very quickly moves forward here at the end. Now, that brings us to our first physics term. Uh, if we're moving, we're changing our position, that's called displacement. So when I go from here to here, I've displaced the disc about half a meter because it's going from this spot to that spot. And if I look at the numbers on the graph, it's about 0.5 and it's in meters. So it's about half a meter. That's your displacement. It's how far you've gone from one spot to another spot. How quickly that happens, how quickly our position changes is our velocity. Um, that's how fast, right? So a lot of the times we use velocity, speed, acceleration. We use a lot of these terms in our everyday life, but we don't really use them correctly in a physics sense. So displacement is how far you've gone. Velocity is how fast that happened. The rate of change of your displacement. And on a graph, that looks like a slope. Now here, a slope is just what it sounds like, how steep the graph is. Here it's kind of flat. Here it's going the opposite way. So what's going on? It was at some point kind of 0.6 meters away from the origin. Then it goes down to here, which is about 0.5. So it got closer to the origin. What's happening there is he's reaching back. When he reaches back, the disc goes backwards in the opposite direction that he's moving. And then it starts moving forward again. And again, it's kind of at the same slope, the same angle as it was before. Until right here, 
right here suddenly boom that slope gets huge he speeds up that's when he's pulling the disc through awesome so velocity is how fast the disc is moving and when we want to throw far we want to have a big final velocity it's one of the terms they got wrong in that last that video i was referring to before so the faster it's going at the end the better i can actually use this software to show the velocity here's the velocity of the disc over time you can see it's got a positive velocity that's fairly small it's not moving very fast and then it's got a negative velocity that's when he's reaching back it's not a very big negative velocity but it still is moving backwards for that short time during his reach back then it's moving forward again until bang wow it got fast it changed its velocity the velocity changed and increased during this period right here so before we had a slope of a position time graph that told us how fast it was going. Now we have a slope of a velocity time graph. That's going to tell us how much it's accelerating. How much is the velocity changing? In this case, the velocity change is big and it happens in a short amount of time. So we get a big acceleration of the disc as it's pulling through and leaving his hand. Now this is really cool. What happens to the velocity up here at the very end? This is after the disc leaves his hand. Notice that the slope of these two points here, it flattens off. Once the disc leaves Nate's hand, it's not accelerating anymore. In fact, it's gonna be slowing down. So we can't see that in, in this small amount of time that we have there, but we do see that it stops speeding up. And that's really important. That's a really important physics concept. It's called Newton's second law. Um, the more force you apply, the more acceleration you get. But if there is no force, there is no acceleration. So. This is the biggest acceleration, which means we got the biggest force. F net equals M times A. One of the most famous equations in all of physics. F equals MA. So looking back at this, where do we get the most acceleration? That pull through. Where do we get the most force? Where we have the most acceleration when we're pulling it through. Now, this is like the coolest thing. In the seminar, that Nate gave, he talked about how the throwing motion is a pushing motion, not a pulling motion. And I've been saying he's pulling through with his body, but he was talking in the seminar about pushing with his legs. So in order to analyze that, I tracked his center of mass, his center of gravity in his middle of his body. And I showed how that was moving because the disc is moving all over the place. There's upper body motion. It's a very dynamic motion, but his center is much simpler. In the first part of his run-up, he's moving at a fairly constant rate. This is a position time graph, so the slope is its velocity, and that's how much it's changing right here. There's a spot where the slope changes, and it's right here. What happens at, a, at that spot? Well, suddenly the slope goes from this um, flat line here to this higher slope flat line here. It's an increasing slope, which means we have an increasing velocity. The velocity graph gets a little messy, but I'll show it to you. Uh, but we can see an average velocity here that's smaller than the average velocity up here. So what happened at this spot? What happened when we got this acceleration? And that's like the coolest part, because at that spot during this time of the acceleration, that's when Nate planted his foot and drove off of his foot into into the throwing motion. He drove off of his back foot and accelerated his body forward, which was then followed by an acceleration of the disc. So his body accelerates here. And then if we go back, back to the velocity of the disc, the disc accelerates shortly after, about um, a third of a second after the body accelerates, the disc accelerates as well which is fascinating. It, it proves his point in his clinic, which is also on the No Budget channel. You can check that out. But his point in the clinic was that it's a pushing motion with the legs. And we can see that in the acceleration of Nate's center of gravity. Just fascinating. Now, how does this translate into a higher disc speed as it leads your hand? How do we um, translate this into the final velocity of the disc as it's being thrown? That's in our next episode. Thanks for watching.